Baba. And in fact, I first heard of him when Tehelka, in 2006, September issue, gave a preview of his photographs from this book with uh, forward by Manohar Shetty. And I was so stunned by the beauty of these images that I kept the issue and I was able to lay my hand on it right away. Because not only, um, it's not just the starkness of the images that he brings you, but the compassion with which he views this vanishing world, which I often call Lisbon on the Mandovi. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're living in another world that we've all shared in. We who live in Goa and come from Goa and surrounded by furniture from a different country far away and paintings and furnishings and clothes and food from far away. And I wrote a poem about an abandoned house in my village of Moira. It's called Miss Havisham of Moira. And on the, on the roof of this abandoned house is a series of cowls with little crosses on top. And I said, is everybody going to Moscow in their minds? <laughs> inside, inside those houses. And that's, it's a complete, it's a different world, it's a different space, it's a world within a world. And it's a world also on the cusp of decay, it's a world that's on the point of vanishing and that a few people are trying to preserve, but it's the last generation that will we be able to live in these houses with the paintings and the photographs mixed in with drawings done by their children and grandchildren and the good with the indifferent and with the bad all together and keeping up this image of a world. It's not the same thing as buying an old colonial house and refurbishing it and living in it. It doesn't have the same sense of timelessness. And this is what they said in Tehelka. They quote Prabuddha saying, what was beguiling in the homes that I visited was a sense of suspended time, almost as if you could interchange the real people with the photographs of their ancestors on the walls and nothing would be altered. Nobody would notice. So all of us here in Goa know we have friends here or we happen to have family here, how timeless it is to sit in one of these houses with no fans, sit on the balconies at dusk with the neighbors dropping in and uh, listen to old music and look at old photograph albums. And um, if you had to choose one thing that struck you most about this world, what would it be? Prabhuda, apart from the suspended time. Difficult questions because so many things strike you at so many different instances. Uh, your question was, what is the one thing that would strike me? Is that in a few years, none of this will be there. I think that's, to me, the overwhelming feeling that I get when I visit these places, these beautiful homes. And uh, I think besides that, it's also what I feel about these places, these few homes that I visited and the people, these, these people in whose celebration really this today's, this whole event is. Unfortunately, not many of the people that helped in the making of this book or this project and who were in the book and in the, in the, you know, in the exhibitions that I've traveled all over, that not many of them are able to be present because this was really, uh, for me, it was a celebration of their generosity and their hospitality and their, their, their warmth, which I encountered over the three years that I worked on this project. Because it is, it is really unusual that as a stranger, and I still consider myself a stranger here, even though I've been living here for three years, is to be able to visit a house, look at it from the outside, 
and think that this looks like something really interesting, something that, you know, I would love to meet the occupants of this house and go and knock on that door and say that, you know, I am here, I love the exterior of, of your house, I want to see what your life is like inside and uh, can I come in? And more often than not, I think other than maybe one or two stray incidents, I was welcomed. And not just welcome, but but plied with food and fanny and wine and conversation and laughter and history and stories and everything that I would have wanted in a project like this was just laid out for me. And that is something that, you know, that I will never uh, be able to uh, reconcile in terms of reconcile with my other life, the life that I have lived all my life in, in big cities, Bangalore and Delhi, because I can't even imagine beginning a project like this in that kind of territory. Because uh, I think our cynicism and fear and, and um, sort of the, the uh, more, more the fear of a stranger is so deeply entrenched in where I grew up that this would definitely have not been possible. Anyway, before I ramble, I wanted really to thank all of those people that have helped in whichever small way uh, to make this book possible. And I'm really, uh, I'm sad that not many of them, I can just see a handful out of maybe 50 people that I've photographed and more homes that I've photographed that are here present for this occasion, but my heart goes out to them. And uh, thank you very much. And I'm going to pass you back to Tanya. Yeah, you have, in the middle of your book, you have this whole series of images of decay, starting with the vegetation and then going on to those shelves full of utensils, empty bottles, solitary figures, those wonderful calloused hands together. It almost seems to bleed a feeling of sadness. But also, the way, you, the way your lens captures it is a sense of acceptance. And of course, our Goan Catholic community here in Goa isn't the only community in the world that's on the verge of disappearing. And there these photographs strike a universal note. Because what is true of what is happening here in Goa, and in 50 years we may just have books of photographs by wonderful photographers like Prabuddha to show us what once had been so all over the world there are these pockets that exist and that's where his photographs rise above the personal or what is here happening here in Goa, the world, this little world in Goa to encompass all these other pockets all over the world. So would you tell us what your, who your favorite photographers are and who's most influenced your work? Well, to talk about favorite photographers would take a whole day, I think, because there is so many of them and uh, influences are wide and varied and they come at you at every level. But uh, in this particular instance, I think there is, there is a lady uh, whose work I admire and respect very much. And uh, I'm sure a lot of you are are, know her work and her personally. Her name is Danita Singh. I was hoping she would be here, but she's not. And uh, I have to also thank her because as, you know, in some ways, I think as a, as a critic who was reviewing my book mentioned that uh, Danita's work, what she did in, in Saligao with the families of Saligao is a, is a, I forget the exact words, but it was I think a substantial predecessor to this body of work. So uh, I think in the immediate context, I would want to thank her. And of course, there are many others that, uh, you know, like I said, the list is too long and I wouldn't even want to get into it. Uh, and like Tanya mentioned about the sadness, there is, of course, sadness. And uh, in fact, I have heard from a few people that why is the work so sad? I mean, couldn't you in all your travels and in all your... 
sorry. Okay, she wants to say something. <laughs> I have to mention that Prabhuda is scattered through the book despite this sense of, you, you know, really bleeding sadness and the world suspended in space. He scattered these wonderful images of vitality. You have the altar boys giggling in the church procession and then you have the wedding. You have the little girl in her first communion dress seated in the parlor with all the cabinets full of ornaments behind her. You have Alexis laughing. Then you have that lovely teenager, Sasha, sitting cross-legged on that chair as if she's going to erupt into the air like a firecracker and her parents very significantly are sitting behind her in the shadows.